Hey there, and welcome back to netgamechat.com, a collection of the most advanced network demos built in Unity. If you're working on a network game or just learning how to create them, you'll find my Discord very helpful. You can join it by clicking the very first link in the description. Now, in the last video, we took a look at how to install the netcode for GameObjects package as well as set up the network manager. In this video, we'll take a look at exactly how network variables work. I'll take you from the beginning of how to create the network variables into the advanced topics of how to create custom network variables for your game. You can skip to specific sections of the video using the suggested timestamps. So let's get started straight away with how to create a network variable. You can see here, you can create a network variable by simply specifying the network variable name in any variable and then specifying a type. Unity supports specific types for network variables and what you put here will specify what information your network variable stores. Now, one particular thing with network variables is that you cannot create them without initializing them. While my editor here shows this in gray to suggest that it is unnecessary, Unity actually does require you to initialize a network variable by giving it an, a default value on creation. With this initializer as well, come a few extra options that we have while creating network variables. The first parameter here specifies the default value of this variable. The value that you put here will be the initial value that this variable is given when it is created across the network. The second variable specifies the read permission for the network variable. In this case, I've specified everyone, meaning everyone can access the information stored in this network variable. And finally, we have the write permission. Here, I've specified the server, and this means that only the server can read and write to this variable. There are a few variations to this constructor. Here, we've specified the read permission as only the owner. This means only the owner and the server will be able to read from this variable. We can also do this for the write permission. Like here, we've specified that only the server and the owner can write to this variable. Again, regardless of what you specify, the server will always be able to both read and write from the variable. For this particular tutorial, I'll go ahead and set my variable back to public and remove any initializers as I will simply be using the default value. It's just about time now to take some time taking a look at our scene in Unity. Inside the scene, we have this network store object, which is what has our network store component object. You can see the edge variable is here and it is actually marked as a network variable by Unity over here and the default value is zero. Let's also take a look at our network player just to understand how things are working. The network player is simply a UI element with this server or client switch. It also has a input field where we can put the value for our edge variable. On the server in particular, we can click this submit button to save the variable. Inside the network UI script, we can see how this is set up to work. Not much of this code is of importance to us except right here. This function checks to see if we are the server, and if we are the server, on the submit button, it adds a listener for the on submit function that we'll take a look at in a minute. As you can see, if we are not a server, it actually disables the submit button. This is very important because at the moment, our variable can only be written to by the server. If we are not a server, we should not be able to try that. And in fact, Unity will return an error if you do try to write to a network variable that you do not own. If you would wish to write to a network variable using a client, you can simply set the permissions as we showed earlier. The submit function is also very simple. It simply sets the netstore.edge.value equal to a past value of what we've entered in the input field. I would like to point out a few things to avoid at this stage. This code here actually achieves very similar functionality to what we have achieved using the onSubmit function. The difference with the update function and our onSubmit function is that the onSubmit function is only called when the submit button is clicked, while the update function is called every single frame. There is danger in trying to set network variables every single frame because every single time you make a change to a network variable, a lot of information is sent across the network. This means that you can clog up the network and cause network messages to be sent across the network very slowly. This is obviously very dangerous because in network programming, we try to minimize the amount of information that we send across the network at any one time. 
So this is just something that I wanted to mention and get straight out of the way. If you want to update network variables, only update them strictly when an important modification is made to the information that they store. We can get rid of that now and then see how this code runs in the Unity editor. Now that we have our game running, we have both the server and the client. We can head over to the server here and I'm just going to enter the value of our edge as 10 and I'll go ahead and click submit. When I select the network store object on the server, I see that the information has updated and the inspector can reflect that. On the client though, inside our input field, we don't appear to have any information. Selecting the network store object though, I can see that this information has changed on the client as well. And this presents an interesting problem for us. How do we know when network variable information changes so that we can reflect it in our game? Thankfully, in netcode, this is very easy. Back in our own network spawn function, once we confirm that we are in fact not the server, we can then get access to our net store object and then the edge network variable. And using the on value chain delegate, we can get access to a function that has two parameters. One is the old value and then the new value. Then we can use this function to get access to the input field and then its text parameter and change that to the new value and convert that to a string. Using these kinds of callbacks, you can always receive function calls whenever information on a network variable changes. Let's get back in Unity and see how this works. Back in Unity, we can see that when we make a change to the value of this variable and hit submit, we actually get the client to update as well. So we're getting close, but there's still a few questions to ask. One of the most important users of network variables is perhaps to store the username of a player. So here I'm creating a new network variable and just uh, specifying it of type string and trying to use it to store username. I don't get an error in my code editor, but when I try to run this in Unity, I will actually get some issues. This is because network variables at the moment can only store non-nullable types. To tell if a type is non-nullable, you can try this by simply creating a new variable of that type, for instance, I'll call this name, and then trying to assign its value to null. If the code editor is actually okay with this, it means that the type is nullable and is not supported as a network variable. If you tried this on something such as an integer, for instance, that we have already had, you can see that my code editor specifically specifies that I cannot set the value of an integer to null. There are other types that are, for instance, possibly nullable and are still not supported by network variables. Either way, this gives us a chance to test out the custom network variable. So let's go ahead and create a custom network variable that will help us store our username. Thankfully, creating a custom network serializable object is very simple. We simply start by creating a new struct and giving it a name and then deriving it from I network serializable as well as system I equitable. Using I equitable requires us to implement an equals function as well as the network serialize function, which is required by I network serializable. Inside this struct, we can then create the variable that we want to store. We'll start by dealing with the equals function. This equals function is important because it allows the network system to determine when a variable has changed. Usually, when a network variable has not changed, the network system will not go ahead and send it over the network to try and save bandwidth. So inside this function, you want to be as critical as possible to make sure that you only return false in case the variable has actually changed. This comparison actually does it without any consideration for the case of the string. And hence, regardless of what the capitalization in the string is, it will only send the network variable over the network if the string changes. Inside the network serialize function, we need to take care of two possibilities. So either this function is being read from the network or being written. To the network. You can see the code that we run for these two scenarios. In the case of reading, we simply get a fast buffer reader and then read our value and store it back into our string variable at the top here. In the case of writing, we simply write our variable to the network. Now, because this particular network serializable is actually storing a string, we need to initialize it with an in initial value for the string. Back in our own submit function, we need to make a few changes to some obvious things. Here we need to change this to username and we don't need to pass the int value anymore. As you can see though, we still have a problem. Because our network serializable is actually a struct, we cannot simply save it like this. What we can do actually is we can create a new net string and then we can pass this value into the st. And you can see this is now valid and we can close this off like this. Because we are assigning a new variable 
to our value. This would mean that even if the previous variable stored the same information as our new variable, there is actually a difference between the two. This is where the equating functionality comes in very handy. Because we wrote our proper equating functionality, the network system is smart enough to know that despite them being two separate network strings, provided they both store the same text, there's no need to send them across the network again. One final change we need to make here, once again, we need to change this to the username. And now because we are passing in information as the network string, we can no longer simply convert it into a string. We'll need to use the st variable, which is part of it. As you can see now, back in Unity, if I was to make a change to this network variable, say something like Alice, and then I hit submit, you can see now that it changes on both the client and the server. Now that's pretty much all the fundamentals for network variables out of the way. With this kind of information, you'll be able to create advanced network variables that manage different things in your games. Thanks a lot for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe and join the Discord, which is the first link in the description.